Want to know how to collect Pokemon cards? Then stay tuned for this video because I'll give you my five top tips on how to collect. My name is Half from MiniPokemon.com, the only place where you can learn, buy, collect, and invest in Pokemon products. And today I'm very excited because we're going to go away from just the investment side of things, but we're going to talk about how you can build that collection. How can you build that portfolio that you will have for a long period of time until you make the decision whether or not you want to sell or you want to keep going, all right? Uh, and it's very important to know these tips because in the end, we all want the same thing, right? You want to buy low and then eventually you want to sell high. But these tips are also applicable if you're just a collector uh, and if you just want to increase your collection and keep growing it over time. And uh, as I said in my previous video, if you haven't checked it out, check it out after this, this video. But it's a big difference between a collector, an investor, a flipper, and a speculator. And this video, I'm going to be focusing more towards the first two, the collector and the investor. Investor, because as you grow your collection, you're basically creating an investment on it. And a collector, because when you're collecting your cards, you're basically growing that, that collection that you, you're interested in. Let's just go dive into it and let's start with point number one. And the point number one is the most important one and that's why I'm starting with this one. And that is to set up a goal. And by goal is what you're aiming towards, right? It's very important to have a goal because I have seen multiple people enter the collectible space, more specifically the Pokemon collectible space in the card side, um, and start trying to collect them all. And even though I say that in every video, it's very hard to collect them all. <laughs> With more than 20,000 cards just in English alone, imagine the amount of money that you will need to spend in order to collect every single card out there. And that's not even counting Japanese or any other type of language that the cards released on. You know that the Pokemon cards are released in German, French, Italian, Spanish, Korean, um, Chinese. And I think that's all. Uh, yeah, I think that's all. But maybe I missed a language. If I missed one, let me know in the comment section. <coughs> but it's so much out there that it's so hard that you will just burn yourself out. I've seen a lot of people coming into the hobby and trying to collect everything. And they just started spending a lot of money that not necessarily they need to spend on it and, and by the end of some months they just decide to stop it because they cannot keep spending that much money. Let's keep in mind that Pokemon Company releases a set every three months. So, and the set's now growing and growing in terms of the car cards that they come that they come with, it's going to be even harder as we move forward to actually collect every single set that comes out. So, with that being said, setting up a goal, it's crucial to actually start collecting more wisely and to spend your money more wisely. Especially if you care about the investment side of things, you don't need to have a lot of quantity, you need to have a lot of quality. And that's why setting up a goal is important. And to help you set up a goal, I'm going to, I will give you some questions that you will need to answer in order to understand what you want to collect. And the first question is, what are you going to look for? Are you going to be collecting full sets? Are you going to be collecting sealed product? Or are you going to be collecting a specific Pokemon card? Uh, or a specific card, right? These three are the foundations of what you need to answer in order to start collecting. If you decide to go on sets, it's a different approach that you will take for collecting than if you go and, and, and take the approach of sealed product or Pokemon cards alone. Once you decide whether or not you want to collect sealed sets or raw cards, the next thing to do is to decide which era you're going to collect. You're going to collect modern, uh, Nintendo era, or Wizards of the Coast. <coughs> Once you decide that, then the next logical step will be to ask yourself, are, are, am I collecting only in one language or multiple language? My recommendation is to start with one language. Usually English is the easiest one, but Japanese has also a good availability now online. Once you decide that, then you're set up for a goal. You now have decided, okay, I'm going to be a 
a sealed product collector focused on Wizards of the Coast era and that's my goal or I'm going to be a Mewtwo collector and I'm going to collect all the Mewtwo cards that are come out there from Wizards of the Coast, Nintendo and today's era. That's my myself for example. I love collecting Mewtwo cards. I love collecting shiny Pokemon cards, Japanese and English, uh, also Mewtwo Japanese and English. And I love to collect also my third goal is Japanese cards, promotional cards more specifically. So those are kind of my three goals for my collections. I usually go with those. Now let's kind of subdivide that specific goal into other possibilities because as you can see just from point number one it's very in-depth where you can go down you can go down this rabbit hole so if you go seal product it's a no-brainer you're just collecting booster boxes or booster packs but then you have the question just an just like in cards whether or not you want those be to be graded or not in cards you have the possibility of going raw or graded in, in, in whole sets, you can choose graded or ungraded, right? So there's the second layer of it where you need to make a decision. Okay, I want to invest my money on a graded card or an ungraded card and in which conditions you want those cards. So as you can see, there's a lot of, you can, of questions that you want, you need to ask yourself before you go dive into it. Right? It's very important that you ask yourself those questions. And once you have all those answers to start with point number two which is set up a budget. This is very important. A lot of people burn themselves out, as I said, because they just start spending money like crazy, pumping it to the hobby. And it's great, the enthusiasm, but after some months, you're just going to burn yourself out. It's very important to set aside a specific budget for your disposable income that you will spend on cards every month. You don't want just to go in depth because you're investing in Pokemon cards. Remember, Pokemon cards are a commodity and as an investment is very hard, it's very fluctuative, right? When we're diving in the collectible space, you cannot go in depth just to invest in the collectibles because they are so insecure it's a very insecure investment tomorrow pokemon company can decide to do something crazy and your investment can go down the drain so it's very important not to go in depth just because you want to invest in pokemon cards okay it's good to have a disposable income and a budget every month that you're going to set in order to start growing your collection and it doesn't need to be big right if you look at the pokemon cards there are Pokemon cards that are, are vintage, Wizards of the Coast, that are still very, very affordable. Like, they're not going up like crazy in value, uh, but they're slowly growing up. So, it's an investment because it's growing in value, but at the same time, it's not breaking your bank, right? So, <clears throat> set up a budget every month. $10, $30, $100, and, 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 and with that goal in mind that we discussed in point number one, try to aim for that. Let's put an example. So let's say, for example, you want to decide, you decide in point number one that your goal will be to collect all Nido Kings. And uh, those Nido King cards are beautiful. I love Nido King, by the way. And uh, you decide that you're going to go with graded Nido King cards. You're collecting everything that comes out of Nido King, and you're going with PSA 10. Now, PSA 10, 9, 8, it's a different video that I will be recording. I will be telling you the differences and what makes sense in order to invest. Because when you're dealing with graded Pokemon cards, your investment grows more than when we're dealing with raw cards. And I'll go into that in another video where I'm talking about graded cards, raw cards, and sealed product, and the difference on growth that I see in today's era. Now, you decide to go with Nido King PSA 10, and you start looking eBay and scouting and, and I'll be talking about that in point number three uh, and number four, but you decide to start looking for, for a Nido King and suddenly you come up with a Nido King that's for sale. Let's say it's a crystal Nido King that it's going for around $500 and it's a PSA 10 and uh, you decide, okay, I want that, but I cannot afford it today. What do you do? Should you spend credit and just put it on the credit card and not be able to pay it? And the answer is no, that's wrong, terribly wrong. And that goes to point number three. Point number three is do your market research. 
okay? It's important to do market research, and I'll go into that Neo King example back again. But point number three is do your market research as I showed you in the other video on how to know the Pokemon prices. If you don't have not seen that video, it's a long video, but bear with me. It's important that you learn the tools on how to check Pokemon prices in order to make wiser decisions in the future. So if you haven't checked it out, go and check it out. Uh, I will leave a link here in the eye bubble and in the description of this video so that you can go and check it out. As I said, it's a little long, but it's a lot of golden nuggets that you will, you will enjoy. So after you do your market research, you, you realize that that Nido King has been actually been selling consistently for the past month, couple of months, around 500 bucks. And let's say, for example, you have set a budget of $100 every month. So you'll be saving $100 every month all the way until you get to that 500, 600 mark, 700 maybe because of projection of growth on that Nido King. And then you'll be able to acquire in seven months that Nido King. Now, you can take advantage of credit. I'm not saying don't use credit at all. You can use credit in your favor. Usually PayPal has 0% APR on six months purchases that are above certain level of value. So let's say, for example, that you indeed have that $100 mark for every month as a disposable income that you can use in Pokemon cards. And then suddenly you see this Nido King for 600 bucks. You know that in six months you'll be able to liquidate that depth so you can leverage the credit of PayPal without any interest grab the card today in the price that it's in today's market and then pay in six months without going into that. You can do that. And that's, that's what I do usually in, in, in a lot of the cases. Leveraging credit is very important in order to grow your collection. But what I'm saying here is you shouldn't go in a debt that you cannot pay because if you start paying interest in that investment or in that collectible, then you're doing things wrong. And that's why point number two and number three, it's important. Do your market research to know the value of the card so that you don't overpay. And number two, point number two was have a budget in mind. Now, point number four, strategy. You need to set up a strategy on how you're going to tackle that, um, that goal, right? Now you know how you look for cards, you set up a budget, you have a goal. Now you need to set up a strategy to, in order to fulfill that goal, right? Um, you, you, you need to choose whether you go with the smaller cards first and start buying a lot of them. For example, if you're going on the cards route or if you're buying sealed product on modern, are you buying just the new ones because they're more affordable than the old ones or you're starting with the old ones? You need to make that a strategy. My personal strategy is to go with the most expensive asset first. And the reason why I'm, I, I take that strategy is because usually the most expensive one will keep growing up in value. So usually I like to go with big fish first and then I can just stay with the small fish afterwards and keep investing that disposable income that I have on a monthly basis in smaller cards or sealed product that is not that expensive. Up a strategy, how you're going to actually tackle that goal. It's very important. Make that decision. As I said, my personal opinion is go with big fish first and then start slowly going down. But be very smart, right? You need to analyze the market, as I said on point number three, analyze the fluctuation of prices and make wise decisions on when to buy. You want to buy them when they're low. Usually cards fluctuate all the time. And if you're keeping records on the Excel file, as, as I suggested over certain periods of months, you'll eventually know which cards are on a growing trend, which ones are going on a, on a, um, on a downtrend, okay? So that's point number four, set up a strategy and then follow it and stick to it. And eventually you'll get there. So don't worry. It might seem difficult, but you'll finish things uh, if you go on your own pace without on pacing yourself. And then the last point on all of this is point number five. And I think it's very important as well. And it's to have fun. 
a lot of people usually end up having this obsession of actually just collecting that they don't even look back into their collections and it has happened to me as well where I just buy up tons of cards and then I don't even remember that I had them until I opened the box long time uh, after several months and it's like oh I had this card this is so cool um, so take a step back just chill relax and start looking back and enjoying it just enjoy collecting enjoy uh, buying those pieces and enjoy looking at them from time to time sometimes if we sometimes when you grow your collection so big you end up not having um, the opportunity to look back into those cards or into those sets that you have collected uh, so that's that's my tip number five keep having fun remember why you're doing this that it's not just for the money the money is a side thing if you're making some profit out of it that's great but in the end this is the hobby is a collectible card game not an investable card game right and that's why we love collecting we love actually uh, investing in things and collect and, and buying things that we that we care about that eventually it might give us some money back but in the end, if you set a goal for because you love polywags or because you love ratatas, it doesn't matter if you collect all ratatas out there because you love them, even though the investment might not be right there. Now, as I said on my previous videos, you can always have a goal where you're setting up an investment goal of I'm going to buy this specific Pokemon number one because I like it and number two because I know in the future it will bring some money back to my table. So that's, that's the five points that I have. And as an extra tip, if you like extra tips, just like Steve Jobs used to, used to say, and there's one more thing. <laughs> um, I think if you really have are growing a collection, remember to take pictures of your collection. Use apps like Instagram or Flickr to actually store pictures of their cards because the more cards you start to get, the more your collection grow, it's going to be harder and harder to actually look at your cards. So it's very important that actually you use those apps so that you can share the collection with other people so that you can actually share with interested people that might be interested in buying those cards from you. And it's always good to look back into your cards and remember what you have in your collection without the need to be physical in that, in, that, in that space. Sometimes when the collection grows too big, and that's part of the next video where I will be talking about how you can keep your collection in pristine condition, sometimes you keep your collection sparse around different storage centers or different areas on your house, which is harder to find the cards that you're looking for. So having that in inventory and using those kind of apps is very, very useful to know what you have in your collection. That's everything I had for today. Hopefully you like it. If you did, make sure to hit that like button and let me know in the comment section what do you like to collect, what is your goal, and what are you actually aiming for in terms of your collection. And um, if you haven't done so, make sure to hit that subscribe button, hit the notification bell so I can get so you can get informed every time I post a new video. Until next time, remember, gotta collect them all.